In the second part of the lecture, I will give you the geometric version of linear programming, and then we will have a first approach how we can try to solve it. In a geometric little sense, what we have is we have a set of half planes, and we have a direction. Now this is very similar to what we had in the convex hull. There we had a set of half planes, we wanted to intersect them, and then that gives us the convex hull of the point set. Here we again have a set of half planes if you're in the plane, or half spaces if you're in R to the D, and that gives us a convex set. But now we also have a direction C, and we want to find the point in this intersection such that C times that point is maximum or minimum, depending on if we have a maximization or minimization problem. So instead of finding the convex hull, we want to find the point on the convex hull that maximizes or minimizes some vector. There are many algorithms that solve that, and the most important ones are probably the following three. The first one is the simplex algorithm by Danzig from 1947, that's very old. And that algorithm is a very good algorithm and practice to solve linear programs. It has been shown that random linear programs can be solved in cubic time by this algorithm. And that's also usually the behavior when you have practical instances. But in the original version, it could be that you don't even get to the optimum solution because it could cycle. There are some improvements that can be made in pivoting, and then you don't cycle anymore, but still it has been shown that you can need an exponential number of steps. So this algorithm is not in P. Still in practice is very good, because those instances where it takes an exponential number of steps, they are very constructed. However, for some time it hasn't even been known if linear programs can be solved in polynomial time, and the first algorithm that did it in the worst case in polynomial time was the ellipsoid method by Kachian in 79. But this has a very big polynomial, so the running time is order of n to the 6 times the number of bits you use to encode the instance. This was improved by the inner point method by Karmakar85. There you only, only have n to the 3.5 times the number of bits. And he also claimed that it's faster in practice than the simplex algorithm, which people are undecided. Some prefer simplex, some prefer inner point method, but these are basically the most used algorithms. And there has been a lot of more improvement, and by now the best known running time is order of n to the time you need for matrix multiplication, which is 2.36 something currently, I think. But those are not really usable in praxis. In praxis you usually have something of these with some heuristics that improve it. But we today want to focus on a special case where n can be large, but where d is small, and we want to consider d equals 2. So we have linear programs where we only have two variables. Those are very special. But that means that we have a problem in the plane. So we want to intersect n half planes. And although this looks very restricted, it's still a very important problem. For example, in the book, they give this example of casting iron. So you want to have some cast and you want to build some three-dimensional object and then you want to be able to remove it. And to figure out if you can remove it, you have to figure out in which direction. And if you want to move it upwards, then basically every point in the plane gives you one direction where you can move it out. And that you can formulate as such a two-dimensional linear program. Okay, so before we get an algorithm, we need some properties. Mm, the first one is how can our solution look like? And there are basically four options. The first one is, if we look at this example here, we have a green and a blue and an orange half plane. The intersection of them is empty. There is no point that's on all of them. So if the intersection is empty, then there is no solution here. What else can ha happen? We have the intersection here, and it's unbounded in one direction. And this is not a problem, unless it's unbounded in the direction of C. Then the solution is basically in infinity. If it's bounded in direction C, for example here, this is the intersection of all the half plates, then there is a finite solution. But then there are still two cases, because either this can, the optimal can be a whole segment, like here, each of these points is an optimum solution, or it can be a single point. If we rotate C slightly, now this point is better than all the others. So either no solution, or infinity, or a segment, 
or a single point. So let's move to our first approach to solve this problem. And the first approach is we want to explicitly intersect all these half planes with each other. And then we want to walk along the boundary of these intersections to find a vertex where c times the vector x is maximum. How would you solve this? Oh, one way to do it is to just take the first half plane, intersect it with the next one, then intersect whatever you get with the next one, intersect whatever you get with the next one, and so on. If we do it that way incrementally, then for every half plane we add, we have to do something. And the complexity goes up in every step. So if the complexity of everything goes up, then we need more time every step, and then it might take a very long time. Imagine if you want to sort something and you take your whole array of numbers, you pick the first one, you take the second, add it and sort everything, take the third, add it and sort everything, and so on. That's basically insertion sort. And in every step you have to do more than in the previous step, and then it takes order of n squared time to sort n numbers. But instead, if you're a bit smarter, you divide everything into two parts and sort them, then you can do it in order of n log n time. And that's the divine and conquer approach and that we also want to use here. So our first intersect half planes algorithm looks like this. If there's only one half plane, then our solution C is exactly this half plane. If there are more, then we split it into two sets that contains half of the half planes. So one of them is rounded down and the other one is rounded up. And then we have to recursively solve them. So then we have to recursively call intersect half planes for h1 and for h2. And what now? Now we have recursively intersected all the half planes h1. We have recursively intersected all the half planes h2. But how can we combine these solutions? That's the conquer part. This is the divide part, but the conquer is still missing. Those are not half planes anymore. Those can be something unbounded, can be a convex polygon, we don't know. But it's definitely a convex set. And that means we somehow have to intersect convex regions. Or we need some other method where we can get two convex regions and intersect them. What is the running time of this algorithm? Well, this is a recursion. So if we take n half planes, what do we have to do? We have to run the same algorithm twice more for n over two half planes each, plus we have to run this algorithm once. So the time for n half planes is two times the time for n over two half planes, plus the time to intersect two convex regions of n half planes. But the big question is, how can we do this? Before we can figure out what's the running time here, we have to know this algorithm and how long it takes. And that we want to do in the next part.